Nikkor has a new large format headlamp on the market with four LEDs and a diffused lens. It runs a 21700 battery and has onboard micro USB for recharging. While designed as a headlamp, I'm going to come at this one from the angle of it's a work light too. Thanks to Nikkor store for sending this to me to look at and review, and I'll have a link to them in the description below. Here is the packaging the light comes in. It's a nice retail box with a hanger on it. Really goes over the picture of the light nicely. Search and rescue, industrial applications on the side. On the back, you've got a list of features. You get a list of accessories with the lights here. You get a uh, tube for an 18650 battery to run that takes up the space that a 21700 would. So I've got an 18650 in here now. You get a micro USB cable for recharging. You get a pocket clip here. You get a lanyard, a couple extra O-rings, a manual, and a warranty card. You do not get an extra USB port cover here. And I ripped mine during testing. This is 100% my fault. It caught on a cable during testing and I kept pulling instead of stopping. And like I said, that is 100% my fault. You also get a head strap here, which I will talk about later on during this review. So this light is made from anodized aluminum and the machine here is good. Starting at the tail cap here, label that it is magnetic and that is true. It's quite a strong magnet and I don't have my metal plate here handy to show you, but I'll roll up in some pictures. I had no problems hanging this light on the side of a uh, like epoxy table where it was fairly slick. This is a heavy light, but that magnet is quite strong. The body tube here features the same knurling as the head. It's not super aggressive. It's that diamond knurl pattern. Top part has been milled off. The light is attached to the headband here on the side and it is reversible. So here is the strap and it can go on the front side or I can reverse it and it will go on the other side. This is easy to take on and off, but um, for me, it's best if the light goes here on the front half because that's how it's best balanced. And you can then keep the pocket clip here attached at the rear. So you don't have to take the pocket clip on and off to um, kind of run the light in both modes for pocket carry or for headlamp. One thing I will mention about the headlamp though here is, while this is sturdy for use, normal use, it's, not super sturdy if I was going to climb with it or cave with it. I think I'd want an additional zip tie or rubber band or something around here just to have two points of contact. This is a kind of expensive light and I'd hate for something to get caught and rip the light away. It doesn't take a ton of force to do that. You can see here though that this anodizing does come off as I am pulling the light off here. It is scratching, so um, maybe this anodizing could be a little bit thicker and more durable. The head here features a large lens with the four LEDs underneath it. It has an optic sitting on top of that, so the LEDs help diffuse. And then it's got a diffuser on top to give additional diffusion. And you've got this aluminum ring on top that I'm smeared on the top button as well style. The button on top and ring allows the light to stand on its head, which is kind of nice. And uh, you can stand flat like this as well. It does a pretty good job of not wanting to roll around either. On the backside, you've got some pretty deep fins milled in here for heat dissipation. They are reasonably sharp. And then you've got your port cover here for micro USB recharging. Symbols on this light are pretty minimal with the model number here and regulatory symbols, as well as then that tail cap telling you that it is magnetic and giving Nikkor's website. Size and weight here, I measured the length at 128 millimeters, minimum diameter on the body at 26 millimeters, maximum diameter at the head was 30 millimeters, weight with the battery came in at 172.3 grams. A head strap alone weighs 41 grams. Now this is a fairly heavy headlamp. It's a big headlamp, especially when you put it next to its 18650 counterparts. Here it is next to the Olight Perrin. The two magnets on these two lights are wanting to fight each other, but you can see that 18650 Olight is a lot smaller than the 21700 Nikkor. Comfort of the head strap here is okay for a couple hours. Past that, the weight starts to get to you in the forehead. I think Nikkor could add a little bit more padding and maybe these uh, edges, they could recess a little bit more, just a little bit of a design tweak to make it a little bit more comfortable. That said, I like this headband. It's a over the head design. It's got some perforation on here as well as some reflectivity. Retention on the HC35 is, well, this is a light that I'm not gonna wanna EDC in my front pockets. It's just too big for that, in my opinion. With that pocket clip, I could see you mounting this on a backpack or shoulder strap though. When the clip is put on, 
like this. If you've got it stuck out here, about 25 millimeters of the head sticks out. And if you put it on the tail cap here, the light is actually uh, deeper than the pocket clip itself. The balance point of the light is just after the head here, so that's where I prefer to put the head strap at, although it does mount at the tail as well. The light is using four Cree XP G3 S3 LEDs. It's no secret that I'm not a fan of the G3 LED, but this S3 variant here is not terrible. It's Pretty cool white, but that's to be expected from Nikkor. And this S3 variant has a little bit less green tint. You notice it more at lower powers um, and less so at higher powers. The optics in the diffuser here do a very good job of making those four LEDs one uniform beam and perfect for this type of headlamp work light application. And I didn't detect any PWM. And here is kind of a shot, the beam shot with my lights on. Official output modes and spacing are the following. One lumen, ultra low, 40 lumens low, 270 lumens, mid high is 800 lumens, and turbo is 2700 lumens, and that's also strobe, beacon, and SOS. Okay, tonight I've got the Nikkor HC35. This is running Cree XHP G3 S3 LEDs, four of them. I've got it in low mode. They claim this is, or moon mode, moon mode sorry, they claim this is one lumen, but to me, it seems brighter than that. One click up gets me low, which is 40 lumens. You can see the beam here. It's a very floody beam, very wide. Tint for being G3s isn't that bad. It is cool white. One more click up gives us medium mode at 270 lumens. For a headlamp, this is about all you need for uh, close up work. One more click up gives you high at 800 lumens. And we can throw that out here. You know, for being such a floody beam, this goes pretty well. If you had an animal or something like that that you wanted to find in your backyard and your backyard wasn't huge like mine is, this will light up your whole backyard in it without you having to pan much. And then here is top mode, 2700 lumens. You can see that cool white, that tint. Again, it really shows up the entire backyard pretty well. So I wanted to compare it to my Olight pre-run, which I've got on now. That's at 2000 lumens, different LED that it's running, but you can see it's a much tighter beam and even though this is fairly floody for what it is. And here is the Nikkor again, SHC35 2700 lumens versus the Perrin's 2000 Nikkor Olight. Both good options for such a wide angle headlamp. I'm gonna say the Nikkor is more of a work light than a headlamp just because it's size and such a broad beam here. For my runtime, this is really a light designed for longer outputs. Turbo starts decreasing at only 30 second mark and then it declines pretty rapidly uh, down to high at 800 lumens. And this is disappointing that turbo is so short given the mass of this light. I would have hoped to get a couple minutes out of turbo here given the size of it and it's relatively um, conservative heat values. From here, it mostly maintains while slagging a little bit out to the 140 minute mark. And then over the next 20 minutes, you see two large step downs and the light runs low and ultra low for the remainder of the 400 75 minute total uh, runtime. Low voltage kicks in at 2.947 volt. Heat was well controlled in this light. I, at one minute I saw 95 degrees Fahrenheit, at five 97.8, and at 10 minutes 101 Fahrenheit. UI here is a little bit different with fewer shortcut. It's a quick press to turn on the light and it comes on in low and quick presses to go up all your modes, including turbo. It is a long press to turn off. You have shortcuts to low when the light is off with a short press. And if you keep pressing, you get turbo. When the light is on, there is no way to directly access turbo directly. To access the blinking modes, the light first needs to be off, then you double press, and then you single press to go to the different blinking mode, and then long press to turn off again. It's a little bit different UI. Not a lot of lights do this, so for me, it took getting used to, and switching between lights is just a little bit confusing here. Charge time from low voltage protection at 2.947 volts to full at 4.12 volt on the included Nikkor 4000 milliamp hour 21 700 battery was two hours and 41 minutes at a maximum of 2.1 amps via micro USB. The charge curve here looked normal and I have no complaints. It's nice to see a light with the included cell adapter so you can run 18650s too. And this light will also uh, run on CR123s, which that's nice in a backup scenario. During charging here, you've got a blue LED on top 
that will charge and then go solid when completely charged. I do wish Nikkor would have included an extra port cover here for reasons I've already explained. Again, that's not Nikkor's fault, that's my mistake. And I also wish they would have included USB-C with a big battery capacity like this. The light could benefit from faster charging and do so safely with such a large capacity battery. So for me, the pros are its blinking modes are not part of the normal operation. It's very evenly diffused light, but has a cool tint. Direct access to low from off is nice. Nice to run it off a 21700-18650 or two, two CR123s with the included adapter. And no proprietary cables or battery are needed, but it's still micro USB. My cons are it's using that XP G3 S3 emitters, which isn't what I'd expect to find something in this price range. I'd hope we'd find something a little bit more premium and not a super fan of this tint. Turbo of 2700 lumens output, uh, for such a short duration, only 30 seconds is disappointing. Uh, long press to off keeps tricking my brain. And uh, I wish it had an additional clip to secure the light to the headband for additional security if you wanted to do that uh, when you're using this as a headlamp. My conclusion is the Nikkor HC35 is a big bright light. I tend to think of this more as a work light than a headlamp, but it does both jobs fairly well. It's a bit heavier than I'd want to use as a headlamp long term, but what you pay for in weight, you get in runtime. With the strong magnet and very floody beam, it works good as a work light stuck onto metal objects and tail stand on that flat base. UI here is easy, but different from a lot of other lights, so I can see it becoming problems for people to fumble around with, especially if you have other lights, till you get used to it. It's different having turbo as part of your main mode, and I do wish turbo could sustain itself for longer than 30 seconds. Overall, this is an interesting combination for a headlamp and work light, and let me know what you think of the HC35 in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching these videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below. As always, I'll do my best to answer them. I appreciate you liking and subscribing this channel as it helps me bring more content like this to you soon. Thanks for watching.